Good morning, Data Fam, and welcome to fabulous Orlando, Florida. We're here for Click Connect. Very excited to have a power packed podcast all day. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, and I am delighted to be joined by John Furrier and Shelly Kramer this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Shelly, it's been a minute for us on the desk. Uh, and you know, it's time we're back together. It is. <laughs> what did you think of the keynote this morning? I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was really great. I love that, you know, all of the research that we've done. And uh, Click actually just partnered with uh, one of our research partners, ETR, for some research that was uh, in advance of the show and just released. And basically, it showed that, you know, no surprises. Data is a challenge for everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone is working to get their arms around it to understand mm -hmm. how best to leverage it. And, and so it was, I think Mike Capone did a great job in his keynote. And you know, basically he said, you know, whenever there's data, there's opportunity. And that's what this show is all about. Data is the start. How do we work from there to really make sure we have a foundation that's built the way it needs to be. And so lots of great things ahead. Yeah, indeed. It actually says wherever there's data, there's opportunity right behind you. So they're really they're, they're pulling up pulling up the branding. John, what about you? What's your hot take on the morning? I mean, well, what I love about this event is is that we are actually seeing the future pay out right in front of our eyes, and the glimpse into the future of data and AI is happening here. We've been watching, waiting for 14 years for this moment to happen, where you know the big data craze, you know, was Hadoop back in you know over a decade ago. Now we're realizing with generative AI that it's actually happening. Things like Answers was a compelling pr product demo. They got the Talon Cloud. Obviously, a little bit kind of a nerdy conversation there, but what we're seeing, Savannah, is a glimpse into the future of data analytics and AI. And this is empowering businesses that have data, and it's an AI-centric future. And what's going going on is, is that Click is at the forefront because they've done all the work. They've slogged for years prepping the data, doing all that wrangling, ETL. So people who have been in the data business doing that kind of plumbing and kind of the, all that work, mm -hmm. that prerequisite for how to handle the pre generative AI generation are well positioned. And, and I think you're starting to see the trend where companies that are prepared with data and managing data, data governance and, and working with it, are taking advantage of generative and the demos on stage are real. They're shipping in within less than a month, yeah. and they're not just smoke and mirrors. So we are finally at an era now where we actually see the benefit of, of user experiences, the human side of managing data, and again, powering business is going to power more applications. So to me, we're kind of seeing the realization now of all those generations that came before with data, and it's really kind of fun to watch. It is fun to watch. I'm glad you actually brought up the live demos because I feel, especially in a large packed room like it was this morning, thousands of people in there, you don't always want to roll live. I mean, especially with yeah. conference center <laughs> Wi-Fi even, you know, it doesn't matter how great your product is, it's just, it's a bold play and there were multiple live demos. So yeah. I think it was definitely very cool. Yeah. The, yeah, the, the one, one presenter on stage talked about the AI golf club, which I thought was a nice little tongue in cheek, but also <laughs> pr brings out and, and plays up to the hype factor. And you're calling it out and just basically saying, look, it's a hyped up market, but generative AI adoption is here, and you're starting to see real world success stories to your point about the demos. But the, 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 the thing that's kind of jumps out at me from this event is that Click is showing the benefits of handling unstructured data. Yes. So data, mm -hmm. databases have been around, as we talked about for years, generations of data management solutions. But the advent of dealing with structured and unstructured data is really the compelling thing that jumps out at me on this event. And you see the benefits, again, back to the clicks experience, people with data. But when you add in unstructured data, the multimodal generative AI adoption really kicks in. And, and again, I think there's going to be a, a Cambrian explosion of new applications, new use cases. So I'm watching those examples on stage and saying, okay, what's next? We'll yeah. probably see, hear a lot more. One of the things that I'm excited about, there's a lot of very cool companies that use Click. We've got Trek Bikes over here, we've got a UPS robot in the back, we're going to do some interviews with. <laughs> there's a lot of really interesting demos here on the show floor, and it's nice because it's reaching all the way to the consumer. It's, they're not just a company that touches the enterprise, they really cover a lot of bases. So I think we're going to have some really fascinating conversations here yeah. today with our guests. And you know, the thing that, that jumped out at me, Savannah, we've talked about in the past um, in, in other conferences, you know, Data and guardrails with AI, AI, you know, auditing, explainability, all those things that people are talking about, it's kind of scared. Even Dave Vellante said, and I'm scared of AI, and kind of bust his chops on that, but <laughs> trust is a huge theme on stage today. Big you time. heard trust-worthy AI. So trust in data is emerging, and again, not to get all kind of 
nerdy on, on this point, but this is the first conference I've heard on a keynote stage where they actually use the term that we've talked about in theCUBE a lot, data supply chain. Mm -hmm. yep. And you're seeing data products. So we're, we're now entering the era of the data developer, which we've talked a lot on theCUBE, but data supply chain, you're starting to see things like lineage, mm -hmm. big conversation in data at Snowflake, Databricks in here, is the data products. And again, this is now a whole nother level of industry category. Yeah. Data as a product. Data yeah. marketplaces, trust. I mean, these are things that were used for software. Yeah. Terms that were kind of describe a software industry. Yeah. Now, I think the data industry is exploding. We're going to see a whole nother category. I think you're absolutely right. I think data is definitely having a moment. I think that's a good, it's a good call out. And I feel like it's always been, you know, it's been in the analytic side of things, but it wasn't quite across the business portfolio as much as it is now, especially with yeah. AI. And having that trust score, you brought up trust, John. They actually announced a trust score for data on stage this morning. People are going to need to trust this data they're putting into an yeah. LLM, whether that's their own proprietary or whether that's something else. Shelly, from an analyst perspective, what are you most excited about this week? Well, who can't be excited about data and all that's happening right now? I think yeah. one of the things that I am so impressed by when it comes to Click is um, they lead with all things, um, you know, they have embraced data as a foundational element of business. And, and to your point, John, they've done all the work. This is not something that just happened like right. last year with the advent of Gen AI. This is something that's been in the, in mm -hmm. the works, it's been in the process, and we talk about this. This is the gospel that we preach on a regular basis as it relates to security yeah. and how security needs to be foundational. You need to build a culture of security and all that sort of thing. Well, what we're seeing now is Ha the, nece the necessity of building a culture around data. And I think that seeing how Click has embraced that, seeing the work that they've done in the trenches um, for a long time, now coming to fruition, that's really exciting. It's exciting for Click and it's exciting for the industry as a whole. Yeah, I, I, think, think. I, I think that's an absolutely great point. And I mean, Click's been around for 31 years, founded in 1993, so to your point, it's not just yeah, overnight. Not it, new. it definitely is. It definitely is, it is exciting. John, we're going to have some really interesting conversations. I was, I was excited, I was looking at the schedule. We've got a culture conversation, to your point, culture around data. Our first conversation is around culture. We've got, we've got executives on board. Who are you most excited to talk to this week? I'm looking forward to talking to the strategy folks uh, here yeah. at Click because you know, when you look at the revolutionizing of the productivity aspect of, of data, I want to hear what, how they see, because it's again, Click is a, a, a private equity kind of company. They got talent, they got Attunity in there, so they got, they got a lot of piece parts of companies we've covered in the past. So I think they're well positioned for the gender AI boom that's coming, and I think what I want to ask is what's their strategy, because if you look at the, if you just connect the dots forward, the revolution in productivity that's going to come from data and what they do and what they are empowering businesses to do is going to help businesses build a better future and the world. So the question is, what's the data foundation required? So I'm going to probe a little bit on, kind of peeling the onion a little bit on, what's the, what's the foundational prerequisites for the success? What are they seeing as um, use cases that are easy to get in? And how do companies truly bring that foundation so they can democratize, which is a word that been is a cliche. Has We've been, been throwing around. it around, yeah. But <laughs> true democratization is when it's you're not talked about. People just it just happens. So I think yeah. productivity turns into a, a game changer uh, impact to, for for society. And I think as people get more creative and start to see that as benefits, what's that foundation? How do you get there? What's the nirvana path there? So that's to me the big thing. That's awesome. I'm excited to talk about the UPS robot. I went and took a little preview look at it <laughs> earlier today. We actually get to name the robot, actually, for those of you watching at home, if you want to drop in the comments what you think we should name the UPS robot, that's going to happen at 12.30 today, folks. So you don't <laughs> want to miss that. But I, I, I'm excited because one of the things that was cool, I went and talked to Scott over there at UPS, is, is not only is the robot helping with, with uh, factory efficiency, it's, it's a picking robot that goes around and, and optimizes its route throughout so folks can just pick, and, and that also reduces injury and labor costs. But what it does is the robot speaks to the folks in the factory in 40 different languages, which is really cool. And it knows based on your employee badge when it comes up to you what language to speak to you in. And that's really about culture. When we're talking about culture, that's a culture of inclusion. And I think that's really, it's just kind of lovely. Yeah. Yeah, we, one other thing about the, the guests coming up, notice on the schedule they have a lot of customers. So again, the, the keynote yes, was they do have a pretty lot of much not hyped up a lot. It was just all practical. It was the meat and potatoes of just value, yeah. showing real use scenarios, customer stories. We're going to we're gonna hear specifically customers. So I'm interested in to hear where they're at mm -hmm. and what yeah. they think because 
the end of the day, that's the proof point. Ultimate, ultimate proof point is if you got the sizzle and the steak, you, you can want to hear what they have to say. Yeah, no, I think it's great. One thing I noticed, and it was awesome even that they, they threw a wonderful happy hour last night, good music, good food. People are really excited to be here this week. And I mean, everyone's always excited for a show, but there's definitely a buzz. I was even reading the tweets this morning. Oh my gosh, it's going to be such an amazing couple of days. Yeah. So I'm excited to meet more of the Click community. I'm, I'm curious to hear more about their passion and I mean, th what this, this event, on. it reminds me of those success companies like ServiceNow started like this, you know, Splunk started like this. You look at the successful companies that have major customer intimacy and buzz, mm -hmm. and you could feel the vibe, Savannah, yesterday at the kickoff. Um, yeah. It was very social. But it was it was very it wasn't stuffy. Okay, it was very much you can feel the bond between the customers and the love for Click because again, data visualization is an emotional product. It is, and the customers love the products. It is an emotional and product. So That's a great point, John. You can see that, and I think the question will be again, the ecosystem here is going to be interesting to watch because if again, if you continue to connect the dots and look at say on stage, you now also say Amazon, for instance, you have Chris Cruz up there from Amazon Web Services Marketplace, you can start to see what's going to happen if they accelerate into more sales on the SaaS side on the marketplace. You Click will grow to be a bigger company. So the question will be, what's their ecosystem transformation look like? How does that, what does that look like? Will it go the, the path of a service now where you have just this ongoing recurring revenue success? Um, we'll see, I mean, it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I'm curious. So, you know, we'll do a little bit of a swag chat and I did a little early preview <laughs> this morning milling around. There's some cool stuff. Click is giving away pajamas. Pajamas. That's the first. I don't think we've had pajamas on the queue. I, I have not. We're going to have to get our jammies on. We got a late night flight tonight. Today, hey. So maybe, yeah, yeah, we can, we can get we our. We do a queue after dark session. Yeah. I know. <laughs> well, I'm curious. I'm curious. Hey, what you the, <laughs> I'm curious what the hook is with that. I'm wondering if it's, you know, be comfortable with your data or, you know, there's got to be something or but maybe you know, they just want to be different. Sometimes though, spending so many hours at events like this, I love creativity when it comes. I don't need another water bottle. Amen, I says. don't need any of this. You know, one point I want to make and I want to give Props to Mike Capone. He, you know, he's a former CIO, and one of the things that he said in his keynote that really resonated with me as we talk about customers, he said, you know, so often the strategy or the party line is we have to go to the cloud, we have to get to the cloud right now, without because it's good for us. That's the advice you get from cloud vendors. It's good for them if everybody migrates to the cloud, right? Of course. And so what Mike said is that, yeah, the cloud is important, but it, we, it, it takes time. And our job is to work with our customers to figure out the best path. We do it with them, not to them. And I, I love that. And he said that you know, what he is interested in is he wanted to create the kind of company that he wanted to do business with when he was a CIO. So when we talk about this community, when we talk about the customer-centric focus, when we talk about those outcomes that they're trying to help deliver, yeah. I, think that's really, I think that really says a lot about the DNA of Click. Yeah, I really think that's, I, I think, no, I think that's a really good point. And what a nice headspace to design a company from, you know, yeah. mentally, or at least your leadership. Yeah. I know he's been in since 2018. But I think, I, I, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a really good point. Yeah. I think we're going to have a really great day. Yeah. And I am we absolutely are. delighted to spend it with yeah. both of you. We've got a great set here. Shout out to Click's team. I know, look at this they very futuristic great, desk. I'm excited great, about it. Great <laughs> setup, great vibes here. Awesome day. Love We've got it. a dream team on the production side. It's going to be yeah, absolutely yeah. fabulous. Well, John, Shelley, thank you so much for being here with yeah. me. I can't wait to learn alongside you all week, and, and in particular today with Click. And thank all of you for tuning in to our one day of fantastic, power-packed coverage here at Click Connect in Orlando, Florida. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.